chance to rap like uh, We need to make a comparison Oh shit that's embarrassing uh, They said beware of the snakes in the grass But I'd rather be wearing them uh, Everyone knows if I say this fast This shit ain't no narrative Go against me and they play like they scared of one Even to be on the fucking American uh, so yo what's good y'all welcome back to another video and today's video is uh going to be a little bit different it's going to be a not exactly a fruit i mean it's going to be a fruit review obviously you can tell by the title we're gonna be reviewing pa I'm gonna kind of be i i don't know i'm trying not to really uh like take the video idea i guess because i know there's like other youtubers who have like similar like uh ongoing series sort of whenever they're like kind of going from fruit to fruit they'll like do a fruit review uh sorry if i'm like my commentating is like really kind of whack um it's 3 a.m i cannot sleep yeah so um <laughs> uh we're just gonna go ahead and go over all of the moves and stuff and i'm gonna give my input on what i think is like the best combination with this fruit and just kind of overall give like an opinion but like it's like he ain't golly or is it trash i'll probably all right yeah i just came up with a video title thanks me <laughs> but yeah so um is he a trash or is it golly so the first move that we have for he a is ice partisan launch glacial spears that produce patches of frost and so you go ahead and throw it. it's a little projectile it's pretty nice it's pretty useful i definitely do like it it is very useful in some situations whenever you want to let's say cancel someone's move or whatever you can go ahead and cancel their move as if someone was like m1ing you and you were trying to cast out a move you know it kind of cancels it out so there's a lot of like useful situations that you can't or there there are some useful purposes that you can use the ice partisan for but overall it is a very very bad move as it's kind of easily punishable surprisingly not too many people really i wouldn't say perfect block this move but not too many people are very not aware but when a lot of the times whenever i'm fighting i'll throw out an ice partisan if i am playing passive but i also want to apply some pressure i'll just go ahead and keep throwing some ice partisans at them and stuff and honestly i ha i don't think i have been like perfect block when i'm using this move and i'm not saying it as like a skill issue or whatever i'm just saying that not too many people are too worried about the move as you can easily block it but you can catch them off guard like most of the time whenever you use the move but overall it's a pretty weak move i don't really recommend using it unless you're kind of playing passive somewhat and you still want to keep some kind of pressure and it's kind of good for like a little zoning tool honestly if you know how to use it but overall you just mainly need experience to be able to know what you can do and what you can't do and like when you can use this move and when you can't you know it's just like that's one thing that is kind of hard and easy for me to kind of explain like it's easy for me in my head whenever i'm like thinking of like what i'm gonna say about the fruit to pretty much sum it up but it's kind of hard to explain it because i've had so much experience with hiei and black leg so it's just like i know black leg is kind of relevant because we're mainly focusing on hiei but you guys get the point it's kind of hard to uh it's hard for me because i've had so much experience with this fruit that it's kind of like secondhand nature if you guys know what i mean but anyways next up we have pheasant beak propel a mass of pheasant shaped ice capable of freezing victims so it's a pretty useful move you can use it as a sort of uh i guess a not a transportation but you can kind of use it to maneuver around the map as you can see you uh gain like increased speed or whatever you know you can somewhat kind of block on it i mean you can block and like run or whatever i think there's like i don't know if it's like a glitch or if it's some type of trick but you're able to uh i think block while sliding sometimes so i don't know uh that's from what i've heard a couple times from some of my friends but I haven't really like seen it too much uh pheasant beak is a very very powerful move but it is easily punishable and blockable a lot of the time where i feel like a lot of people downvalue and downplay hiei is for the fact that a lot of hiei users and i will catch myself doing it sometime because i'm just kind of throwing moves out there or whatever but a lot of the times a lot of hiei users will run up to you and either do beak into stomp or they will do stomp into beak and it's really kind of like odd in a sense because like a lot of people don't see hiei as a more combo and stun fruit when in reality like that's what the purpose is a lot of people try and use it for damage they try and like get a whole bunch of damage like that's why a lot of people have like three four hundred into like double fruit and they're doing like 70 like to 100 with beak and then like 50 per hit on ice partisan and it's kind of like super dumb most of the time 
if you watch any of my videos you see me use beak in a sense that is more surprising because i tend to not really try and focus on using my fruit and that is one thing that i feel like a lot of people need to focus on in gpo especially in the pvp realm a lot of people lose a lot of matches because they rely too heavy either on their double fruit or they rely too heavy you need to be able to be have like a fluent not a fluent transition but you need to be able to m1 especially with black leg like if you're able to m1 with black leg and you like you can just do anything you're 100 set and like you need to be able to not rely on your fruit but you know when to use it and know when not to that's like the best thing that i can say without like sounding like a douchebag and saying oh you just suck like easy to be honest <laughs> yeah uh, uh most of the times i will use beak and i will follow up with a combo of party table kick course or i would just follow it up with a regular m1 combo and a lot of the time uh it's funny because i was just like there's literally a whole debate in uh winner's discord server like we were literally just talking about um unpopular opinions and like how black leg is like the most cheese uh, fighting style. A lot of the times, I feel like a lot of people say that he is too broken or Black Leg is too broken or whatever. And the two, the two combined are very, very deadly. You don't see any he and Black Leg users uh, like that often. I, honestly, like more he and Black Leg users have been popping up, but before you, you never saw a he and Black Leg user. And I feel like in a sense that a lot of people say it's cheese for the fact that if I hit them and I stun them then it's like oh it's too broken you know blah blah like how is it not nerfed like is it, it is not my fault that you get stunned like i'm gonna be honest like uh i feel like the way that you use a fruit like anyone can make a fruit look really really good like sokoto over here making berry look like it's like one of the best fruits in the game and like he took the time and he like just figured out combos with it and he was just labbing with it like literally that's all you need to do you need to just lab and lab with your fruit you need to find out your weaknesses and you your strengths with like your moves and whatnot but overall i mainly use beak um i don't try and mainly focus on beak you can use it in some situations like i said you can use it as sort of an evasive tool as in like let's say someone is like over here or whatever and they're kind of like playing somewhat passive you know i'll go ahead and like shoot a beak over and then i'll just kind of like run by and like see if i can catch them off guard most of the time i will say though don't try and utilize beak for its purpose of its ice skating for the fact that whenever you are doing an m1 combo let's say i throw down an ice partisan and i hit him let's say i was doing my m1 combos if i move you guys see how i'm kind of like getting shot forward and it's kind of annoying and it definitely messes up a lot of the combos i have sort of adjusted to it I guess in a sense like to where i know how to not get like messed up by the ice skating but most of the time just make sure that you don't like have any ice trails or you're not doing any combos on your ice trails and i know that sometimes you can't like like you can't control it but most of the time don't try and utilize beak for it's evasive you can but really there haven't been any situations personally for me there haven't been really any situations to where i have used beak to sort of of, I guess use it as a sort of maneuver technique only I only use it as like to maneuver around only if like a person is playing really passive or they're kind of like zoning and being but yeah so next up we have ice back not really a move but obviously the fanciest method of transportation obviously this is the most drippiest transportation technique I kind of don't get why it got the nerf where it only lasts for 20 seconds it's kind of weird uh please revert it back for you yeah ice spike like what else can I say like the ice spike is the ice spike and next up we have ice stomp ice stomp chunks of ice burst forth to cripple enemies this move is very very powerful yet punishable and you can say that for a lot of moves but ice stomp definitely is more of a risk and reward type of move i guess you can say not in a sense to where like it's somewhat like self explosion or whatever it's nowhere near that two different fruits but you guys sort of get the point it's just kind of like it it is very blockable it, it's like easily blockable you can easily perfect block it and most of the time sure let's say you do land the move but it will knock the person back all the way across the map so it definitely does have a huge knockback but sometimes i'll just follow it up with a concaster ice stomp 
you definitely need to learn how to use it and when to use it so i stomp really um i try to look for openings to when a person is blocking and then like as soon as they unblock i'll probably just throw it out there because that is one thing that you do want to look out for most of the time i use i i really don't use i stomp like that crazy honestly if it's like a really laid back match and i'm just chilling i'm not really trying to like do too much i'll probably just kind of like go back to like the basic EA like like the typical hiei roots or whatever and i'll just kind of like throw out ice stomps here and there or whatever but mainly most of the time i don't focus on ice stomp in a sense that a lot of hiei users i would say focus on because ice stomp is very very good but like i said it is easily blockable and you can easily get punished so a lot of the time i see a lot of hiei users let's say do a basic m1 combo or whatever you know coiler another m1 combo and then when they finish the m1 they'll go straight into ice stomp it is is not a confirm it is easily like you can easily get perfect block and you can easily block it and i feel like a lot of the times a lot of hiei users will kind of just like whenever they're kind of like running or whatever they'll kind of throw an ice stomp yes i will say that it can kind of catch you off guard because it's like the person is running away but you're really not trying to focus on blocking because the person is running away you are trying to go after them but you can recognize when a person is doing ice stomp because it does have somewhat of a slow startup time sort of it's it's not like crazy slow but you can definitely recognize you know if you are more experienced in pvp you can definitely recognize when a person is doing ice stomp but uh ice stomp is very very good because let's say if a person um from what i know i really didn't know how to explain it like i knew like what happened like pretty much let's say someone was in the middle of doing a move or whatever and like you hit them with ice stomp sometimes they would like drop down and they wouldn't like they would get frozen and they would just drop straight down and they want to have any knockback back it was like an easy and a good punish as well as you know you get some damage it, like you it's pretty much like a power a more powerful pheasant beat from what my friend said uh, i think destroyer said it or whatever um he just basically said it in the most simplest way and like i, I whenever i try and explain stuff i feel like i kind of like rant on and just like i don't know but um he basically said that whenever someone uses a move that has hyper armor they instead of getting knocked back they just drop straight down and so I feel like that this is very, very punishable and is very good. And what I mean by punishable is that when a like the person that is using the move with hyper armor and they get punished by ice stomp. Because ice stomp honestly, uh sometimes it's weird because you guys can't see there is like three spikes pretty much. Most of the time, normally I would say I hit people like one or two times i rarely hit people three times now because i think the max amount of times you can hit someone is up to three depending on how you like where the person is and how you land the move but you can land it up to three times and depending on how much you have in the double fruit that's an easy like 200 damage combo or whatever honestly but it's like a knockback so it's kind of it's a move that you don't want to try and utilize for combos but it's more of a sort of um i don't really know it's kind of like hard to say how you can use the move but really it's something that you don't just want to throw out there because honestly if you just keep throwing it out there a person is going to recognize what you're doing and they're going to easily punish you so you really have to kind of focus on using ice stomp in situations that i feel like if you're trying to get some space and you're trying to like catch a breather get some hockey back and stuff and just regen you can use ice stomp whenever a person is like kind of like pushing towards you or whatever and like i said most of the time when you go up against ca users they may be running away and like they'll just throw an ice stomp and like i said they'll catch you off guard sometimes because of the fact that you won't be focusing on blocking so that is one situation there are a lot of ways that you can use ice stomp though and all of these moves don't get me wrong but i'm just kind of more i'm talking about more of the i would say optimal choices of using the move i guess if that makes sense also if you guys don't know what optimal means optimal pretty much means like the best or like like pretty much like the best route that you can choose so it's like optimal combos with black leg are pretty much m1s and the coiler and stuff like those are optimal routes like normally a lot of uh, some people kind of go for like these kind of funky weird routes and stuff that that's like the simplest uh way that i I can explain it we have frostblade frostblade slash thrice with a frigid blade this move can be used in a lot of ways you can somewhat use this as a combo extender uh sometimes i don't utilize it too much i might try to a lot of the times uh i'll probably sometimes catch a lot of people off guard i'll do a basic m1 combo into a 
uh, Skywalk, and then I'll do Frostblade. And a lot of people are kind of deceiving, like, Frostblade hit range is really deceiving, like, especially with all the moves. Like, sometimes all the moves have somewhat of, like, a, not a big AoE, but sometimes it's really, really deceiving to a person. And so, you can really punish someone with a Frostblade, as well as, like, sometimes a lot of the time, a person will just hold block. And I don't know if they, like, I don't know why if they, like, know that it is a, like, block break or not. Like, at this point, everyone knows that he, uh, like, Frostblade is a block break at this point honestly but um i kind of feel like that people try and like punish it or whatever as in like okay like they're gonna hit me but i'm gonna jump up i can still somewhat punish you off of that so like one thing that i would say is the best way to avoid getting punished is to uh like let's say i cast out my frost blade i would just start get point in the air because they can't aim up like pika lunge or whatever because it's kind of like once you use the move you know you can look wherever on it like when you use the move you can look wherever but once you cast the move here kind of stuck like i'm looking up and you guys see that i just went forward so you're stuck and like you're locked in place whenever you like throw out your first hit so you can obviously be easily punished as well by this because as a hia user when i go up against hia users as a hia user as well i normally have found a way to punish a lot of hia users that throw out frostblade or whatever so like let's say um you know we're pretty much like we're close to this rock and the person is right here and they cast out ice blade i'm gonna go ahead and get bow up and then once they cast a move i'll go ahead and hit them with a beak or a stomp or whatever and then that's a like punish combo for me a lot of the times you can use a uh, frostblade let's say if you wanted to evade a combo and you kind of just wanted to get out of there or whatnot you know like you can use that as invasive you can use that as a damage i would say um frostblade is more of a evasive type of move and it's not really it shouldn't be focused as a combo type of like i guess skill or whatever because it is you can combo with it but it is very difficult as it does have somewhat of a long startup time and even though yeah you can punish a lot of the time uh like a lot of people with frostblade because of like that knockback and then if there's enough stun time for you to get an m1 in you can t uh, you can continue a combo like Frostblade is like a sort of difficult move to use, I guess. Like, I don't really know how I can explain it, but um, you mainly use it for evasive. Personally, I don't really use it as evasive, like, as I should be. I probably should start trying to use it more in, like, combos and stuff so that I can easily punish them. Yeah, that's, like, that's really all I can say is that you can use it, like, Frostblade, you can use, it's pretty much like an all-around move, but except mainly focuses on the evasive side. But overall, it is easily punishable. That's really all I can say. Now, for the final move, on Hiei, we have Ice Age, Flash Freeze, everything within a vast radius. So, Ice Age is a very weak but very powerful Oh, It does have a very long charge up time, but it also has a very long stun time as well as a decent amount of damage. And depending, obviously, on how much fruit points you have, your Ice Age uh, radius does expand a lot. So, we'll go ahead and stand pretty much right here. And so, you guys can see, I'll go ahead and show you guys right now. You can see like that is a long charge of time i haven't like i didn't like just cast a move i probably should have but you guys saw that it does have a long like kind of charge of time i guess but that is the radius we pretty much covered like this whole like area right here which is honestly pretty good a lot of the times i see a lot of hia users uh kind of just run up and then they'll cast ice age and sometimes you may get hit like if you're trying to get away but sometimes when you get hit with ice age and you're trying to get away or like you're uh like rolling or dashing or whatever sometimes for me i get lucky and i'll like i'll be in the middle of my dash animation and as i get frozen i kind of like have this sliding animation and so i'm sliding away and i'm kind of like inside of the uh like little effects and stuff so like i'm laying down and stuff and they can't really see me and i can easily get back up so it's kind of like yeah i got um like i get hit with an ult but i really didn't get punished so uh mainly most of the time i really don't focus on ice age that much because it is easily like avoidable and it's sort of punishable um a lot of the times how i do it is whenever i get in the air and i'll probably super get or whatever i'll go ahead and then like cast my 
ice age and then by the time i hit the ground i'm already like fully charged up and all i have to do is let go or i'll let go pretty much like around here where I, i'm like close to the ground and by the time my move is casted i'm already on the ground and i punish them for that and i would say do not do this as often if you if you use ice age very very often i would say do not focus and like try and i would say make that your main priority whenever you're trying to use the move because one you're easily going to get punished like if someone sees you get one in the air and you did the ice age about three or four times a person is just literally going to run away and then you're going to be stuck waste your ult and then it's like a waste of stamina even though he honestly doesn't take too much stamina um it's just like depending on how the battle is it can really change the tide of the battle so i would say don't try and make ice age a main focus you can honestly find other ways like you can literally just run up and you can use ice age like that is somewhat of a large charge of time but it is somewhat quick like you can catch someone off guard because let's say like it's kind of like they're just holding f and it's like a really passive sort of moment and you know that they're not going to do anything you can run up and you can kind of keep a little bit of space and then you can cast out ice age because you have a very big like radius and honestly uh that's really it um i would say the best uh fighting styles or like the best things to pair up with he is obviously he and black leg is just super super deadly if you know how to use black leg and you know how to use he honestly the two combined is just super annoying and it is super super good uh, that's really all I can say about Hiei and Black Leg is that it's really annoying if a person knows how to use it. Like I said, you can easily punish a lot of Hiei's moves, but, you know, if you get hit by it, don't blame it on the fruit. It's your fault. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to roast you or anything. It is your fault if you get hit by the move because it's like you, you got opened and then, like, we're gonna punish you for it you know so it's just like you, you can't really blame us for punishing you but um he a black leg most definitely uh he a kiribachi is a trend that i've somewhat seen going on around in gpo uh i would say that he a kiribachi yeah possibly uh honestly i haven't seen it as much now as it was like when it was first popping off like i saw a, a montage of he and kiribachi and it is pretty annoying i'm not gonna lie because literally like if you have he a kiribachi and uh black leg or whatever you know because most of the time nine times out of ten if you're a sword user you are not rocking black leg you're most likely using roku if not you have a tp dash but most of the times i see a lot of people using roku kiribachi and hie and honestly it is way more annoying than uh party table kick course the kiribachi frenzy or whatever it is because literally uh Party Table Kick Course does a lot. It does like 18 a hit, 17 a hit, or whatever. But uh, Kiribachi Frenzy or whatever does like, depending on how much Sword Mastery you have, it does like 19 a hit and it hits 20 times. Party Table Kick Course only do hits like 16, 17 times. If not, sometimes it's weird, but uh, Party Table Kick Course will hit like 18 times. I don't know. It's super weird. But pretty much you can, it's like 16 to 18 uh, like hits for Party Table Kick Course compared to Kiribachi, which is like, I think 20 or something just around 20 and uh it's pretty annoying because you can literally stun and then do that and then you can mix in like kiribachi smash and stuff and it, it's honestly a pretty good combo but you are definitely gonna know lab with it because you're definitely gonna need to know how to use it because you can't really go in there blind i guess or whatever because like it kiribachi is definitely a difficult weapon but i did think that it got shadow buffed if i'm correct from what i've heard i think it got shadow buffed on the m1 speed because it does look a little bit faster too i'm not gonna lie but kiribachi is a pretty good weapon and so i know this isn't like i wouldn't say a popular combination but uh i mean it's kind of like a basic combination um i don't know if it is a confirm or not but i see a lot of people doing uh like with roku and hie i see a lot of people doing finger pistol into the beat and i don't know if it is a true combo or not i'm not 100 percent sure so, uh if someone can confirm it that would be great i do not see uh like too many of those combinations anymore honestly like and it's not like um whenever you go up against a hia user you don't see roku but um i don't know it's just it's kind of weird because like honestly 
I have been seeing uh, like kind of less and less Hia users uh, from my time fighting in arena and stuff. But uh, most of the time, you don't really see too many people going with that combo. And uh, yeah, pretty much Hia and Roku is kind of like that basic combo. It's whatever. You can find some pretty cool stuff with it. But uh, there's really nothing too special, honestly. Uh, Hia finger pistol into beak is really like the only combo that I do know with Roku. Yeah, th that's really all I know. Uh, you guys would have to find out more combos yourself. And and another combination i don't know if this is the final combination or not um shout out to uh my boy suki uh when i was fighting him when he had hiei at the time you guys can go check out his uh videos when he was pvping with hiei he found i don't know if he found the combo or whoever the original creator is of the combo but pretty much he did trident and hiei and obviously he had trident hiei roku but trident and hiei he would do m1 combos and with trident and then he would do a air combo and then he would do the pull into the beak and it's like honestly that is a very very good combo i don't think that you can get out of it um you probably can but uh most of the time a lot of the gpo community likes to try and be aggressive so honestly you're gonna punish them for that and it's an easy you know free damage combo and that's really all i can think but yeah if you guys would like to see any more uh like fruit reviews and stuff or whatever or just kind of like analysis i guess or whatever um let me know in the comments down below if you guys would like to see that but uh yeah definitely definitely gonna be grinding a lot more with the uploads since i am able to play and uh yeah honestly it's just it's so weird being back on gpo but it's also kind of like it just i don't know like it's literally like it's been five days like it's the uh 20th right now you guys may see this the same day i don't know but uh literally like i was gone for five days and then i just hopped straight back into arena and it was literally like i never left it, it, it was so weird and it's just like honestly i i don't know like gpo honestly is just like I, I i really can't explain it but uh i'm not gonna try and make this video too personal thank you guys so much for stopping by and taking the time to watch this i don't know how long this video is gonna be i think it might be around 25 to like 30 minutes or whatever but i just want to say thank you guys so much for stopping by again and uh thank you for taking the time to watch my video i really appreciate it uh, if you guys have any video suggestions leave them in the comments down below we're definitely i think i'm gonna put road to warlord on pause for now and uh yeah because really i i don't know i can't really do road to warlord because i'm on a different account and it would just be really weird and uh yeah also i just want to say that you cannot get banned for using tiny task but you can't get banned for using tiny task i just want to say that i have asked my friends as well and you know they also said no and literally the old method was using tiny task like you would literally the old method was to drain your hockey bar all the way down and you would let it rest up and then you would uh like just press j again like that's literally all you did for tiny task uh, you can't get banned for it if you do i'll take the video down so that you know people can't get banned for using it you know but from what i know uh you can't get banned for it and uh yeah make sure you guys do subscribe if you guys are new and uh definitely super excited because we are very very close to 2k subscribers so i just want to say thank you guys so much hopefully i can get unbanned by the time we hit 2k subs and honestly i'm ex super excited for update 4 let me know what you guys think about update 4 i'm definitely going to be trying out gum too when update 4 comes out and uh yeah it's been chasing it guys i'm out